Hey everybody, this is Ralph here again, doing a fun little video, a little different than anything I've done before, uh, to contrast Doug DeMura's uh, comparison or, or his uh, review of a uh, Nissan Murano Cross Cabriolet, which I happen to own. He did say that he loved it in, at the end of the video as his verdict. However, he complained about almost everything in the in the video. So I will contrast each point that he talked about. Uh, first of all, uh, since you're looking out the back window, he did talk about the uh, v vision or the um, the visibility out the windows. I don't know if he's ever been in a Camaro or Mustang convertible. This is a convertible, by the way. Uh, this one has quite a bit more, as you can see, the beach. And uh, I'm inside because there there's a little bit of wind here at Corpus Christi on the beach Sunday afternoon. Oh, and before I forget, my local radio station reminded me to share the verse of the day. Uh, another blogger, or a motorcycle blogger, had reminded me of doing this. So I wanted to do that real quick before I get too far into the video. Let me turn this off so I, you can hear me. I just use my uh, notes app on my phone to write down uh, verses that I want to memorize. Here's one, Matthew 7:12 from the NIV. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Now I always enjoy Doug's videos. He is humorous and uh, very demonstrative with his hand motions and his voice and his uh, expressions. And I'm not going to be that way. But I wanted to talk about a couple of things first. And normally I don't have my face on the videos, but uh, I don't know what else to put on there. He talks about price. Price of the Nissan Murano was pretty high. It was uh, like $47,000 and he compared it to, you could have a BMW. Well, the only BMW in, uh, and this is a 2011 by the way, the only BMW 2011 that I could find is a 328i convertible around that same price. I looked it up. This Murano is worth $17,500. A comparable BMW 328i is now worth $16,800. So even though they were the same price in 2011, now the BMW has lost more value than the Nissan Murano. And uh, this is more valuable to me than $17,500 because I wouldn't sell it for $17,500. Uh, and the BMW isn't worth 16.8 to me because I wouldn't buy a BMW 328 for 16.8. It just does, isn't um, isn't worth that to me. Now there are some quirks with this car. I have to admit, one the wind noise at what are we doing right now 60 miles an hour. The wind noise is pretty high for a what I would consider a kind of a luxury SUV. The uh, navigation, if you can see that, isn't all that great. It doesn't tell you what road is coming up. It doesn't tell you uh, some of the other things that my other cars do, like gas stations in the area, or can't search by uh, restaurants or things like that. So you have to use your phone. The, speaking of phone, the plug-in is way down there, so my phone is like way away from where I really need to be. Um, the seat, I mean the uh, steering wheel heater turns itself on and off. It does have a steering wheel heater, which is nice, but it turns itself on and off, kind of like a, an oven would at, you know, gets to a certain temperature and then turns itself totally off which is really weird you'll the steering wheel will get cold again before turning itself back on it doesn't get the greatest fuel economy for an suv for a, a v6 suv i should say uh, it's showing 19.5 average right now and that's city and highway and that's about what i average 
and on the highway, I might get 23, but which I don't consider great for a modern SUV. Uh, the seats are pretty flat, so as you can see, and the uh, passenger seat is manual. I just showed the bar that you have to use to move the passenger seat forward and backward. The driver's seat obviously is power, but I had somebody get in the other day and they were looking for the buttons on the side. And when I said, oh, nope, you have to do it old school, he laughed. Doug also complained about excessive body roll, but this is an SUV, not a sports car, so yes, it does have body roll. However, I don't see it as excessive, and it, the steering is quite tight. Doug did complain about the speed of the Murano. Now, this isn't a dragster, so it's not very fast, but it's not too bad, and it sounds pretty good, actually. It is a CVT, so it doesn't shift. There's 60 right there, and it keeps pulling up pretty fast. Like I said, it's not going to win any drag races, but at least it's not going to embarrass you on the highway when you're trying to pass somebody. Here I'm going on to the beach, and this is where it excels because it is all-wheel drive. Now do that in your BMW 328i rear-wheel drive. Uh, you can't because you'll get stuck on this beach. And I will uh, park somewhere around here and take a walk around the car. Here we go. How about here? Beautiful. All right, well, we're not at the beach shooting a walk around because that video didn't turn out, so I'm here at my parking lot. And uh, I'm doing this because not a lot of people have seen these vehicles, they say. Like the guy yesterday at the beach said he's never seen one before. Uh, the front end looks a lot like a, a normal Nissan Murano. There's my uh, automatic lights turning off. Uh, however, it's, it is quite a bit shorter. Has two doors instead of four. And the roof line makes it look really unique. I've seen an old 1930s German um, convertible in war movies that look similar to this, and I'd like to look that up, but uh, there is something that is, is like that. Uh, here's the back end. Again, uh, all-wheel drive, dual exhaust. So I think it's uh, definitely a unique looking vehicle. It's, a, it's not necessarily a love it or hate it because I don't, I don't love it or hate it. Uh, I just like the uh, the uniqueness of it. As Doug said, there's 19 out there, but that's not really true. There, this was made for four years, uh, 2008 to two. I'm sorry, 2011 to 2014, and this is a 2011. They didn't really change them. Uh, maybe a few minor things here and there, but. It looks identical as a 2014, this one does. So um, they didn't make them in a whole lot of colors. Uh, this color, the cream that uh, Doug had, uh, I think there's a blue, there's a maroon, and there's a black. And here it is with the top down. For uh, a video of showing the top going up and down, you can see Doug's video, I'll link it below. Uh, one of the cool features I think are as cool as this uh, deck lid that uh, show or that protects the passengers. It, it looks like they're roll bars. They're they're plastic. I'll walk around it as I'm getting some people looking at me as I'm videoing this. <laughs> the other thing he compared to, complained about was the door. So I don't know if he's ever seen any other convertible or large car that is a two-door yes the door is big and it's funny the uh, the guy in that truck over there just talked about how big this door was but how are you gonna get in the back seat if you 
on a two door if you don't have a big door. So I don't see that as an issue. Just don't park close to somebody. He also complained about the trunk room. Well, I have a bunch of stuff in here. He did not pull up the top holder. Now with that, there's a lot more room. Even with that down, I can put a full size golf bag in there. And that's just my computer bag. Uh, but I can fit plenty of suitcases without the top down. Of course, with the top down, you have to have that in place. And that is a quirk of it. It does have a little sensor there. You cannot put the top up or down if that is not in place. If you dislodge it, you're stuck. So. Another thing about this I really like is that, oh, I didn't have it on, but you can roll the windows, all the windows, with the touch of a button. And there they are. So, did he complain about uh, the styling? Yeah, it definitely is unique. Uh, and that's what I like about it. The guy that is right over there came over here and asked, what in the heck is this thing? You'll get that all the time. Oh, and he talked about backing up. Well, that's what you have a backup camera for. Sorry about that sun there. Another thing uh, Doug complained about was the back seat room. Well, yeah, it's not too bad. You definitely can fit two adults in there. I've done it plenty of times. And uh, I am a little bit shorter than Doug, so I don't have my front seat all the way back like he does. But um, even with that, he was in there at least. I don't think it could get in the back of a Camaro or a Mustang or a 328i like I was talking about comparing it to uh, because he talked about comparing this to a BMW. Uh, the weird thing about the back seats is the shoulder harness or the shoulder uh, straps come from the center. The bad thing about that when you have the top down they flap around a little bit. I have no idea why Nissan would do that. Uh, they could have put them on the sides like anybody else, uh, but that's one of my few complaints about this car.